Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, can you all hear me and see my yeah. slides? Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, so I'm a lead engineer in product development at Power Photonic. Um, we are an optics manufacturing company. That's uh, one of our specializations is in uh, beam shaping for high power applications. So what I'm presenting today is some work that we've done in collaboration with WMG at the University of Warwick uh, to demonstrate some of our new beam shaping, uh, new beam shapers, uh, and the advantages they may bring for enhancements in laser welding and the quality of laser welding. So we manufacture optics and fused silica. Uh, we have a laser-based direct right manufacturing process that lets us make fully freeform uh, optics. Uh, well, the two key advantages of our manufacturing is, well, the freeform nature. Uh, that means we have no symmetry restrictions. We, we're not limited to rotational symmetry or, or mirror symmetry at all. Um, and the laser-based machining process means we retain the high LIDT properties of bulk fused silica. Um, so these two strengths play nicely into uh, into laser welding, which is why we've uh, been working with WMG to see how we can apply these in a way to solve a particular problem. <clears throat> the problem that we're, we've, we've addressed in this work is the, the welding of aluminium 6082. Um, as has been mentioned, the welding of some of these aluminium alloys is difficult. The current techniques use filler wire, filler wire so you're adding extra material into the process. It's quite complicated, it can be quite wasteful. Uh, and 6082 is quite sensitive to cracking along the line that you're welding. So we're, in this work, we're aiming to uh, to add some benefit through beam shaping to get a laser weld only process with no filler wire um, and show some improvement into the issues around cracking. Uh, I've got the details of the optical system and the welding setup uh, in this slide, but I won't go through these line by line. I just want to highlight the, in particular that the, the optical setup uh, was quite a straightforward modification. In the, in the laser head, there's a protective window between the fiber source and the collimating lens. Uh, what we've done is taken the dimensions of that protective window and machined our optic into the same size substrate. So installing this is a straightforward uh, case of taking the protective window out, replacing it with the beam shaper. There's no need to change anything in the uh, in the full optical train. There's no large components to add in, um, no no complicated systems to put in place. It's a straightforward uh, swap of a plate that is replaceable. So there's two different um, beam shapes that we're looking at here in this work. The first of them is based on our light tunnel generator optic. So we've seen already; it's it's quite widely known that the um, the welding can be improved with a, a core and ring setup of your intensity profile, where you have the, the central core doing the weld and this ring of intensity that applies some heating around to the surrounding area. What we have with the, the light tunnel generator is we can generate a light tunnel where um, this ring profile propagates through focus. So we've made a modified version of that where we allow the unshaped beam to propagate through, and then there's the light tunnel around it. So you get this core and ring geometry of your shape, uh, of your spot shape, but it also propagates like that for quite a significant distance. So the depth of focus is improved. Uh, we've got we've it gone for a 50-50 ratio of power. It, it's quite visually misleading in this image. It doesn't look like it matches up quite that way, but this when you integrate under these curves, you do get 50% of the power in the ring. Um, and there's two different geometries, one with a larger spot of 1200 microns versus the smaller 900 microns. The other geometry is uh, a little bit different. This is what we've been terming the tail shaper. Uh, this is an asymmetric profile where you still have this high intensity spike that's doing the uh, doing the weld, but you have a, a tail on that power that's only in one axis, only in one direction or on one axis. Um, the idea of this is to reduce the thermal gradients involved in the in the welding process. So you could use this as preheating or post heating. Uh, in either direction, the, the principle is that the, it should be a slower heating or a slower cooling process, and that should uh, help improve the, the formation of the grains after the weld. The geometry chosen here is a, a somewhat educated guess. Um, as, a, as an initial start point, we, we'll be looking to improve this in the future. So uh, to start with, I have this high-speed video of, the, of welding with the unshaped beam. So this is this is no beam shaper in place. It's a 
roughly Gaussian profile that's doing the weld. Um, what I want to highlight here is that this the, the melt pool is quite volatile. There's a lot of motion in there. And you can see every so often there's a bit of material that's being ejected. So this what this will mean is the, the volatility means you increase chances of getting a porous weld. There might be air bubbles getting trapped in there. And the ejected material is going to it's spatter. It's going to end up where you don't want it. So if we move on to the, the LTG results, on the left, this is the uh, the 900 micron version. Um, first thing to note is that the weld is obviously wider because you've increased the size of the weld pool by distributing more power around it. But it's also a little bit more stable. There's, a less, there's less motion in there. There's less material coming out. And then we have the same again for the 1200 micron case. Again, larger melt pool um, and still appears a Difficult to see when you just quickly flash these up, but the, it does appear a little bit more stable as you increase the um, the diameter of the ring that you're using for the welding. Onto the the tail shaper, now we've got the, the two different cases with the same beam shaper. We have forward tail forward for preheating and tail behind for post heating. So immediately, this this is visually much better. There's a lot more a lot more stability. There's not so much motion going on behind the weld. Um, there's no material uh, being ejected, as far as I can see from the video. Uh, it's very smooth looking. And the, the whole structure uh, that's forming after the weld is quite different. And then the same thing again with the tail behind. Now we're, we're affecting the, the cooling end uh, of the weld. Again, very smooth, uh, no ejection, and a, a completely different profile as it's, as it's cooling down. So these are, are just uh, visual images of the, the resulting welds. We've got the full length uh, of, I can't remember exactly how long, full length of the weld and then a zoomed in image. The main thing from these is that the, the volatile nature of the melt pool translates to what you get out as your, your, the visual quality of the weld. The unshipped beam is quite messy, quite unstructured. And then as you go to the LTGs, you've got some improvement. There's some more structure in there and the tail shapers have a much more defined set of features. To make that a bit more quantitative, we um, have also done electron backscatter diffraction um, measurements. This is to show the actual grain size uh, in the welds. Immediately, um, the obvious uh, thing to spot is anything that's black in these images is missing data, which would imply there's a crack. So in the unshaped uh, case, there's a, a crack all the way down the weld line, which is the exact problem we're trying to solve. The LTG 900 case, there's, there's some small amounts of cracking in there. Uh, it's reduced length, but obviously still a problem. Uh, not seeing that in the 1200. We're not seeing that in the tail shaper in either orientation. We can also see that the grain size and the morphology here is changing quite a lot as you add beam shaping into the equation. So the, the LTGs improve this or make the grain structure finer, and then the tail shapers, it's finer still. In particular, the, the rear tail shaper, we have a lot of small grains along the center line of the weld, which would imply this should be quite a strong weld as well. The tail shaper forward version still has some of this, this nice small structure. The LTG is a bit less so. We then run uh, tensile stress measurements, so testing these to, the, to their breaking point. Um, the weld with the unshaped uh, single core spot has a tensile strength, tensile stress of about 175 megapascals, whereas for all of our shaped beams, we achieve over 250. Uh, so this the finer microstructure is, is actually providing a stronger, uh, a stronger weld. So in, the, in conclusions, we have uh, shown that tailoring the beam shape provides stronger welds, and that this leading trailing or an annular intensity um, profile for pre or post thermal treatment uh, stabilizes the melt pool and improves the weld strength. Um, you significantly affect the weld morphology, grain sizes, shapes, and orientations are changed, um, and we've achieved approximately 25% increase in the weld strength. Um, this is only a starting point. We've really just uh, shown that the beam shaping gives you an improvement. The next stages will be to find out exactly what beam shape gives you the best. There might be quite some room to optimize this based on how uh, what size of uh, spot you make, how long a tail, what intensity ratios do you use? There's a whole design of experiment to do around this. Um, so to answer the questions, what can we do for you? Uh, we provide process enhancement through beam shaping. Um, it's a straightforward modification to existing equipment. There's no need for a full redesign. 
Um, we can tailor intensity profiles to the processor's requirements. And within reason, we can do arbitrary output profile shapes. Um, and what you can do for us, well, we're looking for what challenges are seen in welding with a th where adjusting the thermal profile will help. We can adjust the intensity profile to match that. And we're always looking for our partners to work with us to run trials, to find an optimization, um, to, to generate the best possible profile and take this to a commercial application. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Alex. So any question? I, I have a question regarding your tail shaper uh, yeah. optic. Um, because the, the, the way it works looks like uh, the burst mode in some lasers that they send these small pulses to preheat the material and then send the, the main pulse to proceed. Uh, did you did you check or did you compare the the results with the optics compared with these uh, burst mode lasers? Uh, no, all of this is in CW. All of this is uh, like high power macro processing. Um, so I guess the, the difference would be that what we have is a spatial variation rather than a temporal variation. So this is all, uh, you, you have your one input beam and that's generating both the, the welding peak and this tail of intensity next to itself. So then as you translate it across, it's doing the heating. Okay, good. Any final question for Alex? If not, I really thank you for being here today. Thank you very much uh, for your presence. I thank you also to all the speakers that were present today. Uh, it was a pleasure. Sorry for the delay in the schedule, but we have some interesting questions that I didn't want to cut. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next uh, EPIC meeting. Uh, if you find somebody interesting that you want to be connected with, just contact us uh, in the attendees or in the speakers, and we can uh, introduce you by email uh, to discuss any topic that could be, um, well, uh, make sense for a, a further discussion. So again, thank you and good afternoon, everybody. Bye, Eugene. Good afternoon, everyone.